Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to WCS Paddle Sports TV. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a little walkthrough showing you how to upgrade a Hobie Mirage Drive GT to a Mirage Drive 180 V2. So just before we get started, I wanted to mention, uh, please watch the entire video before you uh, try to do this upgrade make sure you have all the parts um, because there are a lot of things that you don't want to just have open and laying around um, like bearings and stuff uh, make sure you have all the tools um, yeah um, so here we go Alright, so I always like to start out by uh, opening up all the parts here and making sure that I've got everything. Now, the only main part that you really need to check on is your spine to make sure everything's intact there. Um, once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and get into taking everything apart, or I guess off of the GT drive that you're going to need to swap over to the MD-180. So the first things we're going to take off here are the idler cable and the chain assembly. Uh, both of these are just going to transfer over to the MD-180, so uh, once you've got these off, just uh, set the attached uh, lock nut and uh, the cables themselves off to the side. All right, once we've got those cables removed, uh, we're just going to go ahead and remove the drum from the drum shaft. Uh, there are bearings uh, on the shaft uh, slash inside of the drum here. Uh, you're going to want to set these aside. Uh, I kind of messed myself up because I wasn't wearing gloves. You do want to keep these as clean as possible, um, so it's best if you can. Uh, wear gloves and then set them somewhere, you know, pretty clean. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the drum shaft from the drum. Uh, the big thing here is that if you want to reuse this spine, uh, you'll probably be a little more careful with it than I'm being. Um, this particular spine is just going into our spare parts, so um, all I am doing here is I'm using a vise to kind of make a little space where I can span uh, the, the drum shaft and then using a rubber mallet to just kind of pound it out of there. You don't really need to hit it too hard, um, just a few soft hits and it'll pop right up. So now we're just going to take that same drum shaft and put it into the uh, MD-180 spine. Uh, and similarly here, I'm just going to use the rubber mallet to get it a little started uh, and then put it in the vise to kind of just compress it in there and get it nice and centered. Uh, once we have got uh, the spine centered, we're just going to go ahead and remove the idler pulley from the GT drive uh, and we'll swap that over. Uh, to the MD-180 spine. Now, this is a super easy part to take out. As you saw, there's just a little kind of set screw there holding a bolt that runs through the uh, pulley and you just pop that out. And at this point, we've taken all the parts we're gonna need off of the GT drive. So you can just go ahead and set that spine and fins what's left of the drive off to the side. And then we're just going to put the idler pulley onto the MD-180 uh, simply by just running that bolt right back through the middle, getting that centered up, and then inserting that set screw. So now we're going to put the idler bearings uh, back on the uh, drum shaft here. So this part, uh, if you kept your uh, bearings really clean and all the grease is still intact, you can, you know, obviously use that same grease. Uh, if you did not keep them really clean, uh, you need to clean them up and put some new grease on there. Basically, there may be a simpler way to do this. I had a hard time getting all the bearings to stick on here, but the, the grease kind of works with you as an adhesive almost to keep the uh, bearings sitting on the shaft. I've also tried starting by putting the bearings uh, inside of the drums, but I didn't really have any luck there. Uh, the best way I could figure to do it was just to kind of try to keep the spine as flat as you can. So you can see here I've got the mallet resting under it, and if you can do that, it's not too terribly hard to get all these bearings on here at once. So once you've got those bearings in place, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the actual drum back onto the drum shaft. You're going to want to be really careful lining this up because if you uh, hit those bearings that are resting on the spine wrong, you can knock them down and then you kind of have to start that all over again. Uh, that's obviously no fun. And once that drum's on there uh, nice and tight, we're going to go ahead and flip the drive over and we're just going to put uh, bearings on this side and then put the drum on over here as well. Once again, really helps if you can keep the spine flat uh, to help those bearings stay in place as you're putting them on there. Alright, so at this point you're mostly done with uh, the assembly of the 
top half of the drive. Uh, all the hard stuff's done now, so we can just go ahead and run all these cables back through. And once you've got all your cables run, we're just going to go ahead and uh, tighten all those nuts back up and get everything cinched up really nicely. At this point, the top half of your drive should be functioning, so it's nice to just take a minute and test everything real quick. Alright, and this is one of the easiest parts of the whole install. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and stick the fin masts into the boom here, and then we'll put the fins themselves on. And after we've got the fins on, we're just going to put on our forward and reverse shifters. As you can see here, uh, I started out trying to use a wrench, but the wrench is kind of slip on the plastic, so I end up switching to some channel locks to get them in there really tightly. Uh, the downside of the channel locks is that it leaves some imprints on the base of the shifter there, but um, honestly, you're, if you're ever messing with them, you're probably going to end up using channel locks anyway. And that's it. Congratulations, your Mirage Drive GT is now an MD180 V2.